are all in this together and very interested in how we move forward to help our adult learners. I'd like to welcome you on the call today. We have members of our staff. You all know me, Debbie Fawcett, Susan Pittman, our education consultant, and we're very pleased to have with us our president and CEO of GED Testing Service, Vicki Green, in addition to C.T. Turner and Brian Smith, who are also sharing with us today. Um, hold, on, um, hold on, Debbie. Um, a lot of people are saying that they can't hear. Okay. Uh, I'm saying I oh, when people are saying I can hear fine. Okay. Let me do something here. All right. Well, hold on a second. I think it was just a startup. Okay, I, I did something on my end, so hopefully it'll work now. Sorry about that. There you go. Okay. But in the session today, we are going to discuss uh, the testing realities and the challenges that you all are finding in dealing with your students that we are working with as an organization to try to mitigate for you. We're also going to discuss some of the basic fears that, that are a part of our everyday concern for our adults during this pandemic. And we're going to review some online resources uh, that we can help you to engage your students in distance learning. We've all practiced distance learning in the past, but it is ever so important today. We're also going to discuss some options for setting up distance learning activities for the students and explore some GEDTS resources that can be used in your classroom. I think this word says it all, the challenge. Um, we are, we're educators, we're used to challenges. I think we are all seeing challenges in a quantity that we've never dealt with before. But the one thing that all of us talk about as an organization is that if I had to face a challenge, there's no one I'd rather be with than my stakeholders in adult education, because we know what those challenges are for our students to even come through our doors. And now we have to help mitigate additional challenges. So as we talk about all the challenges that we face, both on a personal and professional level, the first thing we're going to do is start out with what's happening on the testing front from GED Testing Service. And with that introduction, I would like to turn it over to our president and CEO, Vicki Green, to share some thoughts with you. Vicki? Yes, hi, Debbie, can you hear me okay? Yes, we can. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, thank you to Debbie um, and thank you to all of you for taking the time this afternoon. And I know uh, this is a very difficult time for many reasons for all of us. Um, and so I appreciate you guys giving us uh, an opportunity to talk with all of you. Um, as you know, uh, testing right now is really uh, in flux. We have, um, again, seen a tremendous amount of test center closures across, uh, basically across the globe. And so one of the things that we're working on as a team is to really figure out uh, what each state is doing, the timing behind each of the test centers, and then what we can ultimately do uh, in a safe environment to get those test centers up and running uh, when the time is right, both from a personnel standpoint and from the state's perspective. So um, testing is, um, it's a very difficult time right now, but I can assure you that we have opportunities and options that we're looking at as test centers are closed. Uh, two of them being one paper uh, is an option that we're exploring. And what I would say is that if you have circumstances within your state where you have a student that does need to um, earn their GED credential test based upon some um, tough circumstances, tight circumstances, whatever they are, I would recommend that you reach out to your state relationship manager. And the other option that we're looking at is online proctoring. And online proctoring is an option for us to test students from their home. And so we are working fast and furious to look at how we can move that up in the timeline. And we're looking at potentially mid-May as an option for um, providing the ability for students to test from their home with a minimum uh, PC requirements. 
So those are the couple of things that we're doing to get testing back. We also have a lot of things that we're working on to just prepare the students along the way. Um, again, this call is really focused on how we can um, show you guys some of the tools and products that we're looking at. But there's lots that GED testing service is doing to help our students, to help all of you, our educators, to really continue that learning and studying so that when test centers are turned back on, that we can have the students ready and prepared uh, as quickly as possible. Uh, certainly, uh, one thing I also wanted to touch on is that um, I'm very happy and pleased to say that all of the GED testing service team is very healthy and safe. All of our resources are working from home. Uh, our partner Pearson View has been outstanding and working with us as well and uh, communicating on a regular basis the updates on test centers. So again, if there's anything that we could do to help you that you feel that you're not in the loop on, certainly reach out to us. Um, but our goal first and foremost is really the safety of our, our employees and our team and then certainly all of you and our test takers as well. So um, thanks again for your time. And uh, as always, please reach out to me if you have any thoughts or ideas that we could be doing to help you, your students or your state. With that, Debbie, I'll turn it back over to you. Thank you, Vicki. And now I'd like to invite our education consultant, Susan Pittman, to move forward. Okay, first of all, um, as we get started with everything, um, I understand that there are some of you who are still experiencing sound issues. Um, we have addressed, we're trying to address some of those, but I need a quick show of hands for all of those who can hear me. If you would just click on the little hand button right there beside that's up where your name is listed and just raise your hand if you can hear us. So as we're going through this, and we jokingly, we were just laughing a little bit because some of us, as we were coming in, were having some difficulties um, getting the sound to work for us. And we said, well, we must have a lot of teachers who are out there right now online and teaching courses across the country uh, because here we are in the midst of some really serious issues that are going on and everybody is trying to do the best they can in order to make sure they're staying connected with their students. But I wanted to start this, and as we were talking as a team, about the fact that a big part of this is about you. It's about what you could need to do also for yourself. Because remember, you have to take care of yourself because so many others depend on what you do. And I really like the comment that says, you can't pour from an empty cup. And so along the way, what it's like for you to think about, and I know that it's hard as educators, we tend to be the people who um, try to nurture and take care of everybody else. But first, just keep these three things in mind. Be aware. Sometimes we just need to take a moment to breathe. Just breathe so that we can get that calming influence and just, okay, where am I going next? Because we are in a very stressful situation. Support yourself. Um, you know, it may be that where you are, you know, the nail salons, the spas, the hair salons, all of those things, you know, they're no longer open. And heaven knows we don't have uh, any sports to watch at this point in time. But think of ways that you can support yourself. And I know for some people that I've talked with, they talk about how, you know, they're just doing a journal, just kind of keeping a track of what's going on and how they feel. And the other thing is do something different. If you haven't ever listened to a podcast, consider it. Or, you know, if you're going to take up something a little different, I know I saw on Twitter today where someone was talking about, you know, I'm trying to learn how to knit, but I'm just not having an awful lot of luck with it. And so there was all this conversation that was going on with people trying to do different things. So here's what we need to keep those things in mind if you're going to be able to work over here with all the students that we have. So what can you do to help your students cope? You have a lot more coping skills than many of our students do. So we want to turn that I can't do it into I can do it. 
And that is going to take some effort on your part. And there's a few things that you can help. Um, there are a lot of myths and rumors and everything else that are out there about COVID-19. So spread the word and share the facts. You can actually go to cdc.gov and you can download this particular flyer. Um, and you could post it into something that you're sending to students so that they have it. The one thing we want to do is to make sure that students have the information that they need in order to um, to be safe um, and to have their families safe as well. The other thing that it's hard for all of us to manage our time, but now when things are thrown so far out of whack, um, take time to work with students a little bit on managing time. And this comes from mindtools.com. Um, it, it was an adapted list. There's more pieces that go along with it. But as you're talking with students, if you're, whether you're texting or you're doing Zoom meetings or whatever, we're going to talk about all those things in just a minute. Have students keep their own to-do list. I don't know what I would do without mine. The main thing, main problem I run into is I've got to make sure I don't lose my to-do list. But you can help students by saying, okay, we're going to set some personal goals, um, how we can keep students going, how we help them prioritize. You know, yes, we have content that we want to deliver and keep students motivated on that. But the other thing is to be able to provide them with some tools that will also help them, not just in what they're doing on a daily basis and coming in and attempting to come to class, um, but also helping them in terms of, you know, their own personal lives. And also, you know, it's important that all of us know that we need to take breaks and that it's okay for the students who are trying to, you know, they're worrying about the jobs that they did have but don't have right now, um, their family and keeping them safe and keeping them fed but also being able to focus on what you can reasonably do. We can't do everything, but there are things that we can do. And so we want to make sure um, that we stay along with that. The other thing, and we talk about this because this is what you do within the classroom. You provide clarity for students. And now that you're working at a distance, you need to be able to do that same thing. If they're going to be working with Zoom meetings or you're going to have some remind uh, notifications going out, you need to be clear with them on what's going to be expected. Maybe in all of this, you provide students with a checklist. You know, you attach a document and give them a checklist that they can do. Or another thing that you can do is to take the time to brainstorm ways students can be successful and add some uh, information out to them about what their options are. The other thing is that we know for many of our students, it's really about having options. What we see out there, what we've heard from people is we have a lot of options when it comes to smartphones. Now, that shouldn't be a table, it should be a tablet. Some students have that, and there may be some who actually have laptop, laptop access. But keep in mind that a lot of the things we're going to show you, they're accessible in all of those different ways. So I want to just give quick kudos to Kentucky Skills U, um, their college and career prep department. You know, friendship is sharing the last piece of chocolate, and especially in times like this. And I want to say thank you to them because I had an opportunity to participate in um, a webinar that they were doing and the things that they were doing to support programs across the state of Kentucky. And I know that across this country, there are tons of you who are doing the same thing. Um, as you're going through that you have people and you form teams and groups and you're working with all of those different things. But just to give you a little idea out of Kentucky, um, their college and career prep, which is at the state level, they're supporting local programs. And these are things that if you haven't started doing them because maybe your state's just moving to online learning, 
you may want to consider. They're providing ongoing communication. So there's always something coming out to people to keep them connected, not just to administrators, but to teachers as well. They are building, expanding, and supporting Google Classrooms for those KY Skills U educators. And they're really trying to focus on how can we help provide uh, support for distance learning. They're doing, and, and of course we have to have the, the, these little uh, titles for things, but they're doing Micro Learning Mondays and Workshop Wednesdays. And these are all Zoom meetings. They're not required. However, they're open and available for administrators and teachers. And they take on a topic on Micro Learning Mondays. And if you have a group, whether it's from your school or it's within your region or state, it's another great way to, quote, share the knowledge, share the wealth um, of being able to get together and do that. The other thing is they're providing information on instructional resources. And I have to thank them, especially for some of the resources, because they've gone a step further. They've tried these, they've tested them, and shared them within Kentucky. And we're going to be able to share them with you today, um, thanks to the work that they have done. So they're offering support throughout the state. And I think what we'd love to hear from you from different programs are what are the things that you're doing in order to support that whole community of adult educators and adult learners so that we can share that information out with others. So let's talk about how we communicate with students. Because some of us, you know, we're used to students come into the classroom and we work from there. But there are things that we can do. One of the things that you may want to consider doing is setting up a Remind account. You can get a free Remind account that lets you create up to 10 classes. You can have 150 people in each. Um, that gives you some, a lot of, guide, of uh, leeway there in working with students. You, it gives you a way to do two-way messaging so that you can communicate directly with students and their families to answer any questions or coordinate logistics and handle individual situations. You can give them updates. You can share documents. Um, you can respond to what they do. Um, if you happen to be using Google Drive, Google Classroom, or Microsoft OneDrive, you can connect all that. But let's keep in mind one thing here, it's free. And one of the things we've discussed um, with GEDTS is looking at maybe we can, because many of you may have heard already of Remind Accounts, but maybe you're not real familiar with it, of maybe putting together a little how-to video that we could post um, on the GED website or on the Facebook, uh, the GED Facebook for Educators site as well. Speaking of Facebook, yes. Facebook is more than just cute kitten and puppy videos. Actually, you can set up a Facebook account for your class. Now, this is separate from your personal Facebook account. Um, you create groups within it. You can schedule events. You can post classwork and make announcements. And you can even stream video. So, And we're going to talk about some ways that you you can do video a little bit later. Just one word to the wise. If you decide to set up a Facebook account for your class, make sure your students put you on limited access to their pages. Otherwise, you might see some pics that you'd really prefer that you just not go there. So keep that, that particular thing in mind. And then the other one, Zoom video conferencing. We're using GoToWebinar here, but video conferencing through Zoom, there is a free version. It allows you normally up to 40 minutes and you can have a group up to 100. Um, now, at this particular point in time, they have taken off that limitation of 40 minutes. So you can actually have a longer video conference than that. 
Um, that is one of the things they have done for educators. Students, and you can access this, is available smartphone, tablet, or if you're on the computer. And yesterday I was taking part, I was listening in to the micro learning they were doing in Kentucky and they had a teacher who was talking about his use of Zoom video conferencing with his students. And he made such a good point in saying that our students, they need to hear us and they need to see us. And that's one of the things that Zoom allows us to do. It gives them that sense of familiarity when so many other things are just not the same anymore. So you can go into Zoom and you can set up your own account. Um, basic free version, you don't have to worry about that. And then you have that access back and forth to students. So keep that in mind as you're going through. Now, okay. And I notice it probably you're seeing a little bit of delay and when I change over screens, it's taking a little while because we seem to be a little slow in connection. Um, but let's talk a little bit about developing lessons. If you're going to be out there developing lessons and maybe you're gonna be doing something on Zoom or Google Classroom, you need some content resources. So we're gonna spend the next few minutes taking a look at some resources that can be very helpful to you. Now, if you look to your right-hand panel, um, you will see that it says handouts to, as in your, your panel on the right-hand side of your screen. If you open that, you can download a set of resources as well as this PowerPoint and you can have those. Those will also be posted on the GED website. And I will show you before the end of this where some of the resources are already posted as of today. So let's take a look at some things. So first of all, we have free resources that the GED testing service has out there for us right now. There are things that um, we all can be accessing at any point in time, and we should be taking advantage of those. You know that there are tutorials that students can use and view at this point um, for the computer. There's calculator tutorials, and there's any number of different resources that you could use in your classroom. And this should be the place that you come and check out all the different things that are free on the GED website. Remember, you're just going in through educators and administrators to get to this. There's nothing required for you to sign up. But there's one other thing that you should be um, watching at this point in time. And... My apologies, we have just popped over to the actual website itself. Let me pull us back to the PowerPoint. So let's go back over to, we'll go to the next um, for some reason, it's wanting to pull me aside on this one. Debbie, if you could talk to him just for a minute about the high impact indicators, I need to change, make Correct. a change on this to get it to move forward. Happy to do so. But when we talk about the free classroom materials, everybody understands the information that you can find under educators and administrators and then under free classroom materials. We always say, take the time, you know, everybody has come to this page many, many times, but you don't often take the time to open up each individual bar underneath here to remind yourself. And one of the things that we all, all want to make sure that we continue to discuss and use, especially as you're looking at content lessons now when you don't know when or how quickly you're going to be, is looking at the high impact indicators 
Right now, you don't know how exactly you're going to reach out to your students. So the high impact indicators are, are exceedingly important right now, where we always talk about getting the best bang for your buck and what you are introducing to your students and how you move them along the learning continuum. Susan, if you wanna take it up or I can keep going. <laughs> Thank you, Debbie. Um, I apologize for the uh, technical difficulty we had with that particular one because it was not forwarding from there. But the thing is that as Debbie was talking about with high impact indicators, if we're going to be talking about doing online classes, we need to know where we focus. So make sure as you're going through that you also take a look at those so that again, as Debbie said, you're getting that high um, impact, no pun intended, as you're looking at your instruction. So, one other thing that is um, that we have provided here, and let me go back over here again. On the GED website now, there actually, we have a lot of resources that are listed, and they have done an incomplete setup at this point, it's already on GED.com, of educator support everything from the different things we're going to talk about here all the way to communicating with students what we've already looked at and also some more information on the coronavirus itself so we're trying to make sure that we're keeping resources moving so that you'll have access to those now the other thing is that we have information that's included there from our publishers who are out there and we're going to talk more about these as we move on through but that's another thing as we're trying to go through is what resources are available what are the things that we can actually do at this particular point in time and one other thing if you have not yet joined the GED Facebook group for educators I highly recommend it because this is going to be a great forum for us to be able to communicate back and forth. This is not open for students. This is just for educators. So this is a great place to share resources, to discuss issues that are coming up, um, for us to make announcements as we're going through. So you may want to, when you're, after you finish up here today, go back and take a look and say, you know, I think I want to take a look and see what that Facebook group is like. And there's all the support that we can have um, through that group. But there's some other resources. This one, I had an opportunity yesterday to see a sample of a Screencastify, um, which is actually short video segments, which number one, it's free forever, love it. You can record up to five minutes per video and it's got all the recording features that are included. And then you can take those videos and you could post them into a Zoom class or put them into Google Classroom, different ways. This is a way to make learning more personal. Um, it's something where you can give just a bite-sized lesson you can go through and explain something. Maybe you're working with fractions or maybe you're working on uh, writing a claim for an extended response. But this gives you all those options. It's free and a five minute video works great for students. And there's an opportunity for students to give feedback. So keep that in mind. And that's just screencastify.com. Um, there is a premium version, but five minutes is great for all of us as we're getting started. Now, this was one that was recommended by the Kentucky educators. It's called Quill.org. And this, the Quill has actually offered their premium version free through the end of this school year, which is fantastic because it gives you an opportunity to really take a look at this and see, is this something that could work really well with my, for my students? It is primarily focused on grammar and writing. There are diagnostics available. This can be used not just with English speakers, but also those who are learning our ELLs. 
Um, it integrates very well with Google Classroom. It doesn't track time. And I know for many of you, you need a way to do some of that. So you would have to do some teacher verification, like what projects they're doing. But take a look down here. There's also diagnostics in Spanish. So many of you may find this really good for working with your GED Spanish students. So keep that in mind. You may want to go and try a sample activity, see what you think about it, and if that would work well for your students. And if we have this free through the end of the school year, what a great way to assess something as we start moving forward. Another one that's free until the end of June. And this is for those of you who have never used Quizlet. Um, Quizlet actually puts together like flashcards. Um, it's Quizlet Teacher is free. There is a free version normally, just regular Quizlet. It provides a formative assessment tool. You can create your own content. Um, you can record things. You can set up the audio. You can upload images. Um, it doesn't track time, but you could, again, set it up as activities that students would use. And yes, there are games, but this is not childish. So your students actually, uh, many of them would enjoy working with this. Now, all of you who have been with us before, you know how we always sing the praises of Newzella um, and also Common Lit. This is another one, Breaking News English. Take a look, 2,868 free English news lessons. Oh, and I love it, in seven levels. Plus, there's an added bonus. This provides audio at those different levels um, and it has it at a variety of different speeds so students can follow along as they're reading. There are printable lesson plans, reading worksheets. There's things that you can work with um, when it comes to vocabulary. You can use this. You have to make some adaptations to work with Google Classroom, but um, it's excellent, excellent resource. And even though I know it talks about ESL materials, this is something that students in all different levels can take advantage of. So breaking news English is another one. Now, we have to get over to math antics because we know our students struggle when it comes to math. This is actually a series of instructional videos. They're free. If you want to join for $20 a year, which is really good, you can have access to exercises and worksheets. Um, it is highly uh, recommended from a number of different uh, teachers who are out there. They love this particular site. And, you know, this is less than what many of us would spend on the cost of one book, um, $20 for a year subscription. Effortless math. Some of you may have seen this. Um, it is a free site. It provides PDF worksheets for TABE and GED skills practice. And I know that in some early questions that I had received, um, people were asking about, do you have anything, or do you know of anything that has worksheets? And of course, the next question is, well, does it have the worksheet, but also an answer key? And yes, so students can even self-check their work. This also works with Google Classroom. So easy to upload those materials. If you have not had a chance to look at Light and Salt Learning, um, it's on a YouTube channel. It is an actual GED instructor who has developed the site, and she has done a magnificent job with putting together um, a primarily math content, but it's series of videos um, that students can access and have that review that they're uh, going through. IXL Learning um, is one that is offering a 90-day trial for teachers, and so you can look at this. Um, much of what they do is all about uh, homeschooling. However, it is 
trusted and very much a comprehensive K-12 curriculum. So you would want to look at that content. Maybe you want to look at RLA from 6 to 10, or you would want to look at math from um, you know, 6 to 8, because maybe that's where some of your students are, are struggling. But notice here, it's aligned to tab 11, 12. So another resource um, that can be very useful. And then there's math, the GED math crash course. Yes, we have a lot of people out there asking for videos and notes and practice problems. And so all of these things from GED math crash course can be incorporated into a Google Classroom. And one more that I think, um, actually, I think I have two more, but this one is, again, addressing that whole issue where of math itself. This covers grades K through eight in math. I would focus, if I were you, um, six through eight. But if you just look at some of the topics that are included here, expressions, equations, and inequalities, what they do is they have a portion where students can learn, and then they have questions that you ask. So it has a timer, and it will go through and have a series of questions that they go through. Now, drum roll here, because everyone's always asking, but do you have anything in Spanish? And the answer is yes. It can be in English, Spanish, or there are probably another 90 different languages. So this is all something that can be very useful to students and they can easily access themselves. So this is not something where you necessarily have to download things. This is about giving students that additional practice that they may need. So having said that, I'm gonna stop talking for a few minutes and I'm gonna pass this off to Brian who is with us today, and he's going to talk a little bit about GDTS and some of the publishing partner resources. Um, so, Brian, um, you just let me know when you want things moved, and I'll be glad to go from there. Perfect. Thank you, Susan. And can you hear me fine? Yes, I can hear you yes. just fine, and the, the slides should change over. There you go. Great. Hi everyone, I'm Brian Smith. I'm one of the state relationship managers with GED Testing Service. Um, so I just wanted to talk to you all about um, some of the products we have with, uh, with some of our publisher friends um, that are, I think are gonna be really important as you look for new tools and resources for your students during this time. Um, the first one I wanna talk about is GED Flash. It has been out there for a while. So you, you, might, have, you might have students who are already using it or you as an organization might already be using it. Um, but this is a partnership we have with Aztec Software. They are a preferred publisher uh, with us. Um, and the reason why we came up with this was when we did surveys of GED test takers and GED students, the biggest thing they said they needed was access to more practice questions and free practice questions. Um, uh, or sorry, practice questions with the, the answers. So um, one of the things that people really love about um, the GED ready, right, is it gives them practice questions, but it doesn't, um, and it tells them if they're ready to take the test, but it doesn't actually give them the answers. And so what everyone wanted was um, access to questions with the answer explanations. Um, and so what we've done is we've partnered with Aztec that had access to thousands of practice questions on all four subjects. And so what we have now is GED Flash for organizations. Um, it's been out there for over a year. And so since it's been out there for a while, we've been able to do some efficacy studies on GED Flash. And what we've found is that um, students who are using it, we see uh, an increase of about a four point um, on their GED math scores. So those students who are really taking advantage of it, they go from, a lot of them will go from uh, not quite passing to passing if they're using this. Um, and you see over half the students are increasing GED rep, uh, ready levels. So they're either going from red to yellow or yellow to green. Um, which is key, as you all probably had uh, many students who are in that area where they're close to passing, but not quite there. And we've seen this really helps a lot of students get over the hump and get to that passing level. Um, what's also really exciting is, is that their confidence goes up, right? As you practice and get access to more practice questions with answer explanations, 
um, your confidence goes up. And we see that with the students that they're much more confident um, when, once they use this and they're much more confident when they take the GED test. Um, and then the increased learning uh, students who, who, uh, who use GED Flash, we see that over time, the number of questions they're getting correct goes up, right? So if practice makes perfect, as you continue to practice um, and use this tool, you'll see that um, it's really effective in helping your students uh, fine tune those skills and really get better at, um, at, at uh, moving up within the GED uh, ready and, and passing the GED test. So um, this is uh, sort of, this is probably the only way to get access to thousands of GED questions that have been vetted by GED testing service. Um, it's great because it gives that immediate feedback. I know that's, I think, one of the biggest things that uh, programs who use this currently really like and that what their students like. You don't have to wait. You get that instant feedback on if you did it right or if you didn't do it right, how should I have solved that problem? Um, you can do it at 24-7, right? So it's available anywhere, anytime. Um, you can use it on a laptop, a smartphone, a tablet. Um, and what's great about GED Flash for organizations is that it's got that reporting for educators. So that's key for you all, right, that you need to have that seat time. You need to be able to track how your students are using it. You need to be able to assign them um, specific areas for them to work on, and that's what it has. So next slide. This will just give you, um, when we get there, um, you'll see this is an example of what it looks like for um, students. There it is. Um, so you'll see right here, this is uh, just sort of an example. You, uh, it's based on, it's used on Aztec software platform. Um, so you'll see this is an example of, the, of a question they, they did and it gives them, it tells them if they're correct and then below it has the answer explanation. Um, so it's a great opportunity for students to just get access to thousands of questions, all four subjects. Um, in GED Flash for organizations, there's no limit uh, to how many uh, questions students can go through. And um, it, it's really a great tool for them to, to focus on the subject they need, um, practice, get to practice questions they need, and go on to take the test. Um, and then next slide. And then what's most important here, as you'll see, is that this has um, detailed reporting and insights. So you'll be able to um, track seat time. You'll be able to track time on task. You'll be able to see how many questions did a student take, um, how many did they answer correctly, um, how many didn't they get right. Um, so you can track that over time So for all of your students. Um, so it's a great tool to be able to see, um, are your students getting better? Are they ready to move on to the next subject? Are they ready to take a GED ready or take the GED test? Um, and of course, has that seat time so you can get credit for that time the students are using it. So that's GED Flash, and that's been around um, for a little while. And um, the next uh, uh, tool I want to talk about is GED Play. GED Play is actually just been launched, um, and, and it couldn't be better timing. So um, we just newly launched it with Aztec and um, with Aztec software and with Kaplan. Um, so the need here was what we were what we saw in the field was is that GED programs were telling us they really needed an engaging distance learning tool. They needed access to high quality content to supplement their existing instruction, right? So they're, you're working with a lot of students in the class, but what could they use outside of the class to get access to, to high quality teachers and instruction? And then you needed that ability to track student time on task, right? So you need to make sure you can get credit for those students if they are using this tool. Um, Related correction programs were also having some needs. So we know um, correction programs, um, they need content that can be served offline. Um, we know that they need instruction for students in restricted areas. Um, in a lot of correction settings, uh, the teachers can't always get there to them. And so they need something to engage the students when teachers can't be there. Um, and then of course, teacher support given widely varying levels of student levels. Um, we know that there are um, in correction programs, they don't always have all the resources they need um, a lot of times there's uh, students from all different levels in the classroom, so needing uh, a tool that can help students at different levels. And so what we've uh, partnered with Aztec and Kaplan on is GED Play. Um, so next slide. This is a, uh, a tool that allows your students to have access to high quality videos. Um, it's, uh, it allows them to be able to get um, instruction um, 
uh, on video on demand learning so they get access to Kaplan's master teachers who are really skilled at doing this online uh, teaching. This is really meant to supplement the work you all are doing in the class. So um, if you, maybe you're working on something that can go home and get additional instruction on a specific um, skill that they need to work on. Uh, next slide. Yeah. And then, um, as you can see, the GED Play has access to um, hours of video instruction covering all four GED test subjects um, that the targeted lessons, so the concepts are aligned directly with the, uh, the skills on the GED test. So, and um, what's great about them is, uh, in addition to getting those top rated instructors, uh, instructors from Kaplan, um, who are really good at doing that online training, um, all the lessons are short lessons that are really easy to digest. We know that um, GED, our GED students um, get frustrated if it's a really long um, you know, video they have to get through. So these are bite-sized lessons that are really easy for them to digest and, and get through and to focus on one skill at a time because that's the easiest way for them to do it. So um, this is a, a great tool that's available um, that just was launched and it couldn't be at a more appropriate time for everyone given what we're going through um, and given that um, uh, everyone's really looking for these online tools. And we've already had, I think in just a few weeks it's been out there, we've already had a lot of interest from, uh, from programs. So um, GED Flash and GED Play are available. Um, you can either purchase just GED Flash, you can purchase just GED Play, or you can bundle them together for a discounted rate and get them both. And obviously you can see how they would work really well together where you could use GED Play to get the um, access to instruction and learn a skill. And then you can move to GED Flash and practice those skills, right? And make sure that you've really learned them. So um, we currently do have a promotion going on uh, for GED Flash or GED Play for 10% off. Um, you all, because you're on this uh, webinar, can use the code uh, GEDTFT uh, for Tuesdays for Teachers um, if you're ordering from Aztec. You can also just read, reach out to your state relationship manager. If you know your state relationship manager, they can connect you and get you um, information about um, these products. They can connect you with Aztec who can um, provide demos of the products. They can talk about pricing. Um, and they can also sort of give you an example so you can play around with the tool so you can see if it'll make sense for your students. So you can either, again, email your state relationship manager, reach out to them, or email sales at aztecsoftware.com, um, and they can give you more information about these products. But um, they're both uh, really well positioned for students who are looking to stay engaged um, and looking for more um, instruction or more practice questions during this, during this time. So with that, I will send it back over to Susan and Debbie. Okay, so one last piece in terms of content. And this one is called, if you have not yet seen it, um, it is called Virtual Nerd. And the Virtual Nerd, you can find it on YouTube channel. But if you notice that there are all these different videos, and yes, there's much more than just algebra. Um, it is all about uh, number sense and algebraic reasoning. There are so many different possibilities that are included here. Um, it is free. Um, and you can see here, there's some more specific topics that deal with number sense, algebraic reasoning. My recommendation is to look at the middle school math for many of our students who are coming through. But these are all short videos. This is all free. You can access it at any time. You could refer students out to take certain uh, of the tutorials itself. Um, this is all supported by Pearson Learning. Um, so this is something that um, I would highly recommend. Um, as you're trying to make decisions on, on what you're going to use, what you're going to do. But you know, you got all these resources. But here's the reality. What am I going to do with them? Where am I going to put them? How do I post this stuff? What can I use? And so as we go through this last little bit before we get into our question and answer time, um, this is all about posting your lessons. And so Many of you may have actually looked at the possibility of using Google Classroom and you don't, it's like, well, I don't know that much about Google Classroom. I haven't worked with it. How would I do this? Um, actually, what I did here is I just set up 
a class code. You can go out and visit this if you want to. Um, if you go out to Google Classroom, here is the actual code for this, 0M1DE. Um, and you can actually take a look at it. What I did is I posted assignments, different things that students would be doing if I were setting up a class, you know, so I can go through, pull these different things in, I can set up quizzes. And the one wonderful thing about Google Classroom is the fact that Google provides so many different tutorials to just help you get started. Um, so it's something that I think all of you um, could benefit from, and for many of the students, it works quite well as, as well. And once again, it has taken me out of my, um, hold on one second, and I'll be right back to you. And let's see if I, there, this is an example where I just had um, assignments and quizzes. I actually gave, here's my objectives for the lesson itself, where we view the basics of working with inequalities. We have some sample problems that contain inequalities, and then they learn how to graph those. And so I can then turn around and actually set up a video for students to watch. I can uh, put the link in to go directly to this, and I can set up a quiz so that students have that opportunity to go through and we learn about whatever the content is. Um, we've included material that they can review. Um, we have, uh, we can check for mastery within that by doing a quiz. And it is always there, so if they needed to go back to it again, they would be able to do so. Um, so Google Classroom has lots of benefits from that at that angle. Now, another one that if you have not tried, you may want to take a look at, and that's Edmodo. Edmodo is free. Um, you go in and you set up your class, and from there you can do posts, you can set up notes that go out to those that you're, the students you're working with. You give them assignments, you can set up quizzes, you can pull the students, you can set up a library of resources. Um, so this, you invite students specifically to come in to go into that particular class itself. With Edmodo, students can access it on PC or laptop or on a phone or tablet, and it does come Android or iOS. So you can see here where um, what the screens look like when students are working through and there's access for the video. Um, so those are all materials and those are all possibilities for doing this. But the other thing is that as you're going through, you do want that personal touch if at all possible. And we come back again to looking at Zoom video conferencing. Now, we know that there are a lot of other um, resources and materials that are out there, but what we wanted to do today was give you a, just a kind of an overview of the different things that were available. So what I want to do very quickly is show you that, yes, you do have, um, and it's one of the handouts that you will have, and it's waiting for my screen right now to come up. We have included with the handouts all of the different URLs for all of the different things that we have accessed today. So they are all here. It is a Word document. You can go in, uh, control click, and you can follow that link so you can check out some of these things yourselves. Um, now remember, this will also be loaded onto the GED website as well. The other thing that you can do is, let me pull over to, this is the actual GED website, and if you will take just a minute here, I'm actually going to go into the first part, which is where students would be going in. This is all about information on testing um, and information about COVID-19. This is all for students. And you'll notice they've provided information on the website. 
There's also FAQs for students about, you know, will I get a refund? When can I reschedule? What are the health and safety measures that sites take? Um, so those are all things that um, are available to students right now. But the other thing that is available on the GED website, if you go under educators and administrators, click on helpful resources. And there is the entire page of resources, again, just like what we covered today in the webinar itself. Plus, we included all the digital resources from publishers. Um, you know, notice that here, online learning, GED test prep, free 90-day pilot available, uh, learning upgrade app has a free four-month pilot available. Um, there's a number of different things and different messages um, that you can access as well. So having said that, um, we're going to, at this point, Debbie, do you have any comments, concerns you want to address or um, we'll turn over to our question time? No, I, I really don't, Susan. I think the one thing is, um, thank you all for joining us, but I would like to tell you, you are one of an audience of 1,000 people who were on the phone call, and for our regular folks, you know, that's far more than usually attend, so if you're one of ours who attends our sessions regularly, we're pretty good at being able to go through the questions and answers. But what I will tell you is um, with a thousand on the call, we're going to do the best we can in the short time that we have. Um, and I'm going to ask uh, CT and Brian, who may also have been looking at some of these, but please know that we do have the ability for you to email us directly. And if we don't get to a specific question that you have today, we are always willing to take an email from you so that we can direct or redirect to answer your question. So I don't want someone to be frustrated because they may be asking us questions. Your questions are important to us and we do want to get you answers, but uh, we request your understanding of the volume and we're very thrilled to be able to share information, but that's sort of where we are right now. And, and that being said, CT or Brian, if you have had a chance to see some of these that you would like to answer, and then Susan and I can take some of them in a more open forum, but some of the more generic things, take it away. Can you hear me, Debbie? I can, CT, thank you. Okay. Uh, I just wanted to let you know, I've been furiously responding to questions. I've probably answered over 100 questions. Um, I would say the key categories here are people asking for links and asking for codes um, and asking about the recording. So a couple things here I put on chat. One is make sure you go to the handouts tab. That's where you can find the deck. And then also tomorrow morning, it will be posted on the professional development page, which I provided a link in chat. And it will also be available on the resources page um, soon after that as well. And then there were some questions about Flash and um, Play on whether those are in addition if they're as tech customers. The answer to that is yes. And then the other question related to that is what if I'm not an as tech customer and I want to use Flash or Play? The answer to that is you do not have to be um, a customer for their. Uh, preparation products for their suite of, you know, uh, preparation. You can have those as things that are discrete. So you can add those pretty quickly. And then there were some questions about online proctoring and paper-based testing, which um, I answered mostly across the board. I sent to all, but few we sent privately. And, and CT, I, I saw those two I was looking at, um, and I think it's uh, something that we can answer. Some of you had asked, who gives permission for that type of testing? And, and CT, I think our, our answer is, we all know that your states have different rules and regulations regarding testing, and it would be on a case-by-case -case basis, but we certainly always have to work and defer to the policies in your state. But what many of you will come to understand as, as some of the states I work with already know, what your state has in policy right now 
could look very different than what they are willing to grant due to an emergency or a crisis situation. So just because it is a state law doesn't that you may not be able to do this or that doesn't mean that it would not be at some point worth a conversation about, but what are the parameters in an emergency or a crisis situation that sometimes the rules are suspended. We're not advocating this, but I think it's important that you understand that in these in this unusual time, it is a time to ask those sorts of questions. And CT, I'm happy for you to add anything to that. Oh, I think that's good. I think it will, the authorization has to come from the state office. We've kind of alerted, not kind of, we alerted all the states. Some have provisions to do paper testing already, some do not. And then what would need to happen then is we would determine, say there's a large center with students who have had cancellations. Um, there aren't public testing sites available to them. There isn't an order where they could, they don't, they can't leave their house. In those states, there's not much we can do. You know, for paper testing at that point in time, but if it's just social distancing and they could leave, then we would need to get a proctor. There's a little bit of training and a test involved. There's a little bit of paperwork. And then it roughly takes about 10 days once you've identified those test takers to do a print on demand, ship the paper, to the center for it to be proctored, then to be sent back. It's roughly about 14 business days before from start to finish, from you letting us know to when the scores are posted. It's not a, 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 it's a little bit of a clunky model, but it's to protect uh, the security of the test and you know make sure that we don't have item exposure. CT, I think there's one other thing. I, as you mentioned, the paper testing, I think because we have been in computer testing for so many years, um, just the process of paper testing, I, I think it might be good just to explain that it is not like the old way we did paper testing of shipping out boxes of forms to you. Would, would you like to mention that or is that too much in the weeds for now? Sure. I'll just, I'll touch on it lightly. So yeah. this is, you know, like you said, it's in the old days where we're sending around a booklet and tons of answer sheets and you can just have people fill out the bubble sheets. So what it is, is you would order specifically for a student, a printed on-demand booklet would come with the answer sheet, then it's shipped back um, to then be scored. And so the other thing I'll just quickly say about paper is, paper is an option as a pressure relief valve in some locations. However, remember that people still are printing these and shipping these booklets. They have to be picked up at the location by a person. So if social distancing or orders start to come out where people aren't allowed to leave their houses, that could, that could shut down possibly printing on demand. Currently, there's no disruption right now with who we're utilizing, but that could be down the road. So it's, everything's just kind of a bit of a moving target, I would say. Katie, another question that's come up that I know we've, we've addressed, maybe you want to address it lately, is just what's going to happen once testing is does resume normally and are we prepared for an influx of people coming in yeah that's a great question that's something i don't know if i can't remember vicky briefly touched on it but that's something that we're already looking at so we're looking at lots of different scenarios there we could you know we we expect that there will be a surge of folks wanting to take the test just due to the number of testing centers that have limited hours or limited testing stations are completely shut down in some areas of some states or across an entire state. So we do anticipate that there will be a swell of testing once things become back to quote unquote normal. However, no one expects that there will be a flip of a switch and everyone will go back to normal. It's going to be sort of a phased approach. Some states will loosen restrictions over time faster than others. And so we do anticipate these things. We also anticipate it being possible that some of these test centers are located in K-12 settings, for instance, and maybe that K-12 setting decides they're not going to open up some of their facilities over the summer, even though there's an all clear or some social distancing, but they could go ahead and open up their centers, maybe blocking off every other terminal that they may not, they may choose, or there may be direction from above saying not to turn anything back on, that they're just going to get everything in order and start normal operations in the fall. So there could be those situations. So we are identifying testing centers that currently aren't authorized in states 
who are uh, Pearson View test centers who could be turned on for GED if the state allows, um, and if there's um, capacity to do so, that's one tiny option that we're looking at. The other thing is with the online proctoring solution, it's possible that we could do ad hoc or possibly semi-large or at least con concurrent or one after another testing events as needed in areas where there's increased demand. Um, so we're trying to look at as many things as possible on that front and plan for it as much as we can right now. One of the questions that has come up is where can we find the recording um, when this is posted um, tomorrow? Uh, you'll be able to, if you go into the GED.com website, go under educators and admins, you will see over to the left, it says professional development trainings, and then it has webinar trainings. We archive all of the webinar trainings that we have for Tuesdays for teachers. And so it will look like this, where it has watch now, it gives the resources, it gives you a copy of PowerPoint, but also it will give you a download certificate um, so that you can download it and print that to show your professional learning that you are doing. For this point in time, what I would recommend to anybody is you may want to go back into some of our previous webinars and say, wow, oh, maybe I could use that as an activity um, in one of my um, online classes. So all of these things are still available and you can look through those to see if maybe there's something else that has come up. Um, one other thing, and because people are sharing different websites, from one of our participants, we have commoncoresheets.com, which gives you worksheets and answer keys. So that may be another resource for you as well. And may I add one other thing, because I've seen um, some folks asking here about who their state relationship manager is. Um, I, I want to be mindful that uh, each of you, each state has a state relationship manager for GED testing service. For example, I manage the states of California and Arkansas. And many of your state relationship managers do know, uh, obviously we know the state leaders and we know the local program directors. And sometimes we're fortunate enough to have uh, good interaction with the, the educators at the local programs. So if you are wondering who your state relationship manager is, I guarantee you your program director and if not your program director, your state adult ed administrator, uh, director, and your GED uh, administrator can tell you who the state relationship managers are. With that, Susan, if we've sort of answered all of the questions um, at this point, I'm not sure how it would work to raise hands. We are still checking the question and answer at the bottom, but what would be your preference for moving forward now? Um, I was just taking a look. There's a few things that have been answered or, or you know, that uh, may not have appeared to everybody. And so, um, CT, do you want to talk just a little bit about um, the GED conference, because we do have some questions that have come up about that. Sure. Any of the questions that I thought were pretty broad, I went ahead and responded to all so everyone could see them. Only a few I re that were sent to me anyway, or to, to overall, did I respond to privately. So I want to make just sure folks know that we answered those, those publicly. But uh, on the conference, we are postponing the conference. We do not have a date of when it would be held. We're looking at all options or working with a hotel on availability. Um, so that's in the works right now. I expect that probably in the next week or so, we'll have some kind of decision on that. But uh, And we'll be sending out an email to folks as well when we the decision. But yes, that, that's right. The, the conference in July has been postponed. Um, another thing that it, uh, someone has asked, it says, will we get a certificate for today? Yes, you will be eligible for a certificate, you, but you will need to go in and download it. 
we don't send them out via email. So if you would just go over um, and Tico, I believe it's question that this will be posted tomorrow. Yes, that's right. I will have it posted in the morning. Okay. So it'll be posted tomorrow. So all you have to do is come over to the Tuesdays for Teachers webinar series, and you will be able to download your certificate just by clicking on it. So you will have it tomorrow. Um, and then just a quick, there are a couple uh, people who asked me, um, just a quick reminder that there are previous recorded webinars and lots of other professional development.